Welcome back to Nick Lane's Comic Corner Classic Lesson Young Classics. This is episode number 1545 and double shot number 1439. I have one image trade and one DC trade. First of all, is a trade that collected series that's heard just this year. Why well, initially heard about this series, like, okay, the title looks interesting. And when I saw this was sort of a superhero series that everybody just published, probably the first new one they published in quite a while. And the fact that I've actually met the writer who wrote the series, Kyle Higgins. What series is this? Radiant Black. This trade is the first trade to collect this series, and it collects the first six issues. And this series just, like I said, just started just this year. And, wow. Yeah, you are thinking, Nick, you're really branching out outside Marvel and DC a little much, aren't you? Especially in books like Rose, Department of Truth, Seven Days, uh, Seven Secrets. But this book, I, I kind of did one get a hands. I was actually also quite surprised how cheap this trade was. Like, this trade is like $10. Like... I saw that, I'm like, okay, I'll grab this thing, along with the one other trade that was also about 10 bucks. Yeah, combined, this only cost me about, well, a little over 40 bucks. About three trades, not bad. Now, in this book, the main character's name is Nathan Barnett. He apparently is a down-as-luck guy who apparently is in debt. He tried to get himself a loan. He's also a writer. And he pretty much is trying to make, make ends meet. And... Now, I'll drink up with his friend of his. He also apparently moved back into his parents. He all of a sudden got his hands on this cosmic energy known as the Radiant. Yeah. Called the Radiant. And his suit looks like this. Like, there's his suit. There's also an evil version of this character who apparently is Robin Bakes with a similar looking costume but does a different color scheme. And basically, this is kind of basically like what if people got powers in the in like modern day in from a cosmic sense. And what I can tell is flight, his powers are basically flight with a little bit of super strength. It looks like also telekinesis as well because apparently he can move stuff here. And this is basically the start of his potentially his career as a superhero. This by fact he's also fighting against the cosmic beings who apparently the power was originally theirs that he took. I gotta say, great start for the series. Do recommend it. I give this book roughly a we give it nine point five out of ten. Next up is from Tom Taylor. No, I've never met Tom Taylor. This is Deceased, the Unkillables. Yep, this collects the three issue miniseries. Now I remember, I think this miniseries, yeah, this was a, uh, I think this was a sequel to the original Deceased. I have to take a look on here because I don't think it's, this is the original Deceased miniseries. No, because there's been like several of them. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So this is the... No, this is not the original miniseries. No, this is one of the sequels. One of the many sequels. This is the... Second spin-off book. Mm -hmm. Now, pretty much Deceased. The best way to describe it is that DC's take on Marvel Zombies. Mostly, anyways. Except that... Well, yes, the virus came from outer space, just like in Marvel Zombies... The only difference is, this is the anti-life equation turning people to zombies. It was just a random virus, virus that the, the century picked up in space. And various people are revealed to have the virus. Like, we actually have it's where Jason Todd, where he basically is going to visit the Batcave while everything is going on, all the craziness, and he finds that Batman, Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Nightwing, and Tim Drake are all dead. Alfred's alive, perfectly fine, low and Damien. Barbara Gordon is dead. Yep, she's dead in this reality. And when, of course, J Jim Gordon is informed by his daughter is dead, he's actually quite shocked to see that his daughter is dead. Now, at least I appreciate that the artist put her in 
the not her current costume per se, but they put her in like uh, her previous costume in this mini series. I would show it, but uh, it's a bit gory. Maybe if I do this, use my handkerchief to cover up this top panel here. But if you look quite closely at the panel, yeah, that is actually the costume she was wearing uh, just prior to the costume change. And we have Cassandra Cain in her, well, her regular Batgirl costume. Also, the Joker is dead. Yep, the Joker's dead. And... We also have it to where the villains are kind of like the stars of the series with Deathstroke, who's working with his daughter Rose, and also Lady Shiva's in here working with her daughter Cassandra Kane. And of course, they have a bunch of heroes. Poison Ivy he appears here toward the end of this miniseries, along with Harley Quinn. Now, the main primary heroes of this miniseries are, of course, J of course Red Hood, Deathstroke. Yeah, those two are two of them. Along with a bunch of people who actually... Some of the two died in this miniseries. We also have the Mirror Master appears in here as well. Along with uh, Captain Cold, who actually just died in this miniseries. So we have Deathstroke, Lady Shiva, Deadshot, Bane, Captain Cold, the Cheetah, the Creeper, I, and... Saba Grundy, I think this guy in the beard is supposed to be Vandal Savage. Yep. And here are your, here are your stars of the series. Where are all the heroes? Most of them all dead. Yep. And, well, this is sort of what people do with a post-apocalyptic reality. And, of course, Jason Todd basically is transporting also a group of orphans that, were, that he found. Him and Jim Gordon found. Yeah, Jim Gordon... Does play a small role in this miniseries. Yeah, he's shocked the fact his daughter died, but he's probably happy to hear that Bruce Wayne's son is probably alive and well. Also, his entire reveals to Jim Gordon, hey, I'm J I'm Jason Todd, and of course Cassandra Kane takes over mass like I'm Cassandra Kane. Because Bruce Wayne's no longer around, so reveal the entities. And of course he, he he figures out, oh yeah, Bruce Wayne's Batman, Tim Drake is is Red Robin, and Dick Grayson is Nightwing. It figures like right away, given the fact these two, are, the fact that Jason Todd and Cassandra Kane, I don't know if they actually kept it in this reality when they mentioned that that Bruce Wayne did adopt these two. Yeah, Cassandra Kane. That well, here's the thing about her: he adopted her pre-Flashpoint, as adopted her as part of the family. Jason Todd, he was adopted back in the '80s, but in the case of current reality, they do kind of keep imply the candidate that, well, Batman did adopt Jason Todd. In the case of Cassandra Kane, I'm not really sure about that one. No, I'm not really sure. But by the end, half the half the half the heroic villains who appear in this miniseries get killed off. Grundy gets killed, Bane, Captain Cold, and the Cheetah. And of course there's a statue for them at the very end of this miniseries. Yeah, this is just really good. Tom Taylor writes this thing. This book is fantastic. And I give this book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Really good book. But I don't recommend little kids read it. Because of how gory it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will venture review the other miniseries. There's stuff associated with Deceased. Yeah, this is actually one of the sequels. Now there's also, well, the main miniseries to cover. A one shot and two other miniseries. One is... Hope of Worlds, and I believe this one focuses on Dick Gray, uh, focus on Damien and Stephanie Brown, who becomes Robin again, and of course also Dead Planet as well. Mm -hmm. That's a sequel for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm looking forward to reviewing the rest of Yep, I was right. I'm looking forward to reviewing the rest of the seas because this actually is a really good little side reality. I would say it's the first popular side of reality DC's introduced since Injustice. Though it's also, believe it or not, Injustice was also mostly written by 
Tom Taylor. Well, he wrote Injustice, well, years one through one and two. And he also, he stopped halfway through year three. He did come back for Ground Zero and, of course, Injustice 2, the comic. Yep. He wrote that, which lasted 36 issues. And as far as I can tell for the Injustice stuff, I think, like, after this... Like, after, like, the Injustice comic book. Like, I don't think they did eight. Well, there's also Year Zero. It says Year Zero 2020. There's Ground Zero. I believe that was done by Tom Taylor. But, but um, Year Zero, I think that's the most recent one they put out for Injustice God's Among Us universe. Mm -hmm. Yep. But, yeah, not much to say to the series. There's two things here. Both good. And can't wait to be more of both Radiant Black and Deceased. Okay, so that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned for at least two more videos I'll plan to do today. One, of course, well, I'm hoping to do some more videos for Super Sentai and Baruto. Okay, see you next video. Bye.